Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking to ST Microelectronics and we're going to be talking about silicon carbide power devices. And I have Sven Reithard from ST. Hi, Sven, would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Yeah, hi, Greg. Uh, hello together. My name is Sven Reinhardt and I'm responsible in ST and with my team for the technical marketing for power and smart power products for industrial applications in EMEA. And I'm uh, more than 26 years already with ST and I'm very happy to be here today. Great. So Sven, ST are known as a leading kind of um, supplier in power uh, semiconductors for industrial applications. But could you describe what are the target industrial application segments and the major products that ST offers? Yes, yes, of course. So for power, uh, we have, there are three major industrial applications we are targeting. The first one is energy. The second one is motor control applications. And the third one is the world of factory automation. If you maybe allow me, Greg, I will spend a few minutes to show our audience uh, with what innovative products we can support our customers and their demanding application in these type of applications. So may I share a slide uh, for that? Just a moment. So yes, so here we are. Here we see a typical block diagram of uh, energy or a power solution, a kind of power supply more or less. You see from the input to the output stage. And you can see that on the left, you see the input bridge uh, with a uh, rectification diodes. You see it SCR for inrush limitation. Uh, then we have the PFC stage where we have the MOSFETs, the transistors, maybe an IGBD depending on the power range. We have the, the, the diodes. High voltage diodes can be silicon carbide diodes, of course, the PFC controller, the associated gate driver for the for the switches. Then we have the primary stage again with some transistors. We have uh, again here the control unit and on the secondary side, we have either Schottky diodes, so low voltage diodes or depending on the output voltage and the topology, maybe even high voltage diodes, even up to silicon carbide diodes. Or if customers really look for high efficiency in the low voltage range, for sure also the synchronous rectification with the synchronous controller, SRK series and F7 low voltage MOSFETs. And on top you see on the right some constant voltage and constant current controllers. This is really a typical block diagram and uh, for sure we should not forget that there's also some auxiliary supply to provide the power for the gate drivers and the microcontrollers and also this is uh, from active point of view some area where ST is very active and as you can see you see a lot in this block diagram already the word silicon carbide SIG so it, from the input more or less to the output with the SIG diodes you can have inside such a power converter you can find already a lot of silicon carbide and that's exactly the reason also why we are talking today about uh, this uh, let's say this uh, important white band gap materials as you can see on on the right, the applications we are targeting for energy are really so SMPS from lower power to very high power. DC chargers, very, very important application today. We are addressing in, in Europe um, wall boxes for sure associated also this, uh, let's say, the e electro mobility. Then we have the PV inverter for all the renewable topics, the UPS systems, and in general, let's call it simply high power converter. On the bottom of the slide, by the way, you see also the power range we are meanwhile addressing in ST. You see from uh, from let's say I said a few watt to one kilowatt going then uh, really in the in the multiple kilowatt range, 50 mm -hmm. 60 kilowatt uh, thanks to to modules, but also in the in the very near future also for industrial applications we will exceed the 100 kilowatt and plan really to go also in the range of 200 250 maybe up to 300 kilowatt then in the future. Same view and uh, one more slide about that uh, when we talk about motor control, the second, uh, as I said, uh, uh, important application uh, when we talk about power in industrial applications, we see more or less here on this slide the two main areas we are addressing the high voltage let's call it high power part and the low voltage or low power motor control application. Also here we have uh, the power management, which is more or less what I just described before, but then there is the inverter stage. And in the inverter stage, for sure, we have also here gate drivers, we have integrated solution, even combinations of microcontroller and analog driver. And then on the inverter itself side, we have uh, we have the discrete products, all the transistors, again, silicon carbide becomes also more and more interesting 
interesting and I would not say popular because now a lot of companies they are trying to understand what really silicon carbide brings inside a motor control application and there are some challenges because you have normally lower switching frequencies you require a short circuit capability you you work at a very low dvdt and these are for sure uh, not exactly the strengths of silicon carbide nevertheless silicon can carbide can bring a lot of uh, advantages in such applications and it's quite interesting to investigate and this is exactly what we are doing with a lot of customers right now also in this motor control domain then we see the modules as described before so there's a lot of activity also on the ST side in motor control high voltage on the low voltage low power side more or less the same view a lot of integrated drivers our ST spin family then our isolated and non-isolated gate drivers, low, uh, low voltage as well. And for sure also here the concept of the integration of digital and analog part in one package, the SD spin 32 concept to drive uh, motors uh, where space is really limited and where you need to integrate as much as you can support it again by the inverter stage with low voltage MOSFETs from ST. Yeah, this was a quick overview how we as ST are addressing really here um, with uh, the energy market um, uh, for power. There is, as I said, uh, one more area is the factory automation. I will not go uh, deep in, in this uh, specific uh, application as it's not covering so much silicon carbide, but just to complete the picture, for sure we have the high side drivers, the intelligent power switches there uh, from one to eight channels. We have the galvanic isolated solution if needed. We have uh, safety devices, SIL, SEAL, standard devices where the voltage uh, uh, are above 60 volt, for example. Um, and we have for sure communication ships that like IO-Link uh, for the factory automation market. And there's a nice interview you did with my colleague Milos Hoffman that I can recommend everybody who is maybe interested in that. But as I said, it's not the topic of today. Today, more and more customers want to understand what are the benefits of um, wideband gap materials and what they can do for those customers. But you, you touched briefly on it uh, when you were presenting the slides, but what is it that SICK offers the world of power electronics that other materials don't? And in a sense, from an ST point of view, what is it that differentiates ST from your competitors? Yeah, I think you're right. Silicon carbide is meanwhile interesting for every designer, whatever the application is, more or less. And there are some good reasons behind. I think the, the key point is the efficiency, uh, because uh, now everybody has to develop uh, more efficient systems. And uh, I think we know and everybody understood meanwhile that silicon carbide offers a much better RDS on by area as any other silicon based technology can can do. On top, there are some uh, nice features like this very low derating of the uh, RDS on versus temperature. So there's a very, very good uh, stability of this, uh, let's say, RDS on behave uh, at a full temperature range from uh, 25 degree up to 200 degree for some devices from, from ST, for example. Then if you also compare uh, not only with the standard MOSFET, maybe also compare with an IGPT, for sure there's a much better switching performance. As I just mentioned uh, before, uh, when we talked about power supply, on even motor control. Um, so that means that there are some advantages uh, from, from that. And there's another thing, these are sick diets. Uh, sick diets also very important because they bring the big benefit that they have more or less no reverse recovery effect. So that means they're ideal for hard switching uh, topologies, for example, like a PFC, um, but they can be used very well as uh, behave uh, in, in uh, power management in general, for example, for any type of uh, power supplies, but also for drives. So you find really more and more sick diets as well in the market as well for sure the sick MOSFET as just just explained you 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 said how we differentiate because now there are more and more players in the market for silicon carbide st fortunately is meanwhile the leader for silicon carbide we are very active as you know in the automotive but also now more and more in the industrial market we are following really um, a long list of, of projects uh, all over the world uh, using with customers who wants to use silicon carbide uh, MOSFETs and silicon carbide diets. Um, what I can tell you is ST, and we are very proud on that. Uh, we are we are the, the the only one 
who have a standard silicon carbide MOSFET in the market with a maximum junction capability of 200 degree Celsius. So um, this we have in, in our HIP 247 package, and uh, this for sure gives at least, at least to the best competitor who's uh, with us, uh, at least 25 degree Celsius of freedom, of design freedom. Okay. Then I think what is also quite important is also the packaging, as I said before, we are also releasing new power packages also in SMD version, like, like our Aspex Smith, um, a very nice power package with a lot of design flexibility. And I think this is exactly what customers like, uh, that you really uh, offer a great uh, efficiency improvement in your application, that you offer the right packages that customers can also from form factor point of view, uh, minimize, optimize their design. So maybe we could summarize on, on one slide, we could summarize um, uh, quickly uh, our offer uh, uh, related to silicon carbide, and I would like to show this our audience. Yes, so here we have the, the slide. So you see sick MOSFET, sick diets, sick drivers. I call it the perfect team to handle power. And uh, if you just uh, summarize here, you see sick MOSFETs, ST is offering 650 volt, 1,200 volt and 1,700 volt. And today, um, with this technology, for sure, as I said, uh, we have the best uh, RDS on versus the gate charge trade off. So it's perfect for uh, electric vehicle charging for any type of industrial application. And we are driving today uh, with 18 volt when, when we consider our second generation, what is the actual one we are proposing uh, to the market. And as I said, we are the only one today with a 200 degree uh, junction temperature in the data sheet for our HIP. 247 package. Then there are the sick uh, diets, very important as well. They also start at 650 volt. Uh, then we have the 1200 volt uh, and they go up to 40 amp. Uh, and I think the TRRs for every silicon uh, carbide diet supplier is the same. It's zero, uh, the reverse recovery time. But we differentiate from the ultra low forward voltage drop, the VF parameter. And on top, we have a series which is designed, for example, for very strong inrush requirements. So inrush current limit requirements. Uh, uh, Sorry, they are designed for very, uh, let's say, high surge peak currents, so could be uh, in rush effects, let's say. And this is a series also we offer, so the customer mm -hmm. has a choice between uh, a low VF series or a series which is, let's say, a compromise between low VF, but a very high surge current capability. And for sure, a MOSFET, a sick MOSFET without a driver does not make sense. So we have also a dedicated family for our ceiling and carbide MOSFETs. Um, they are called the ST-GAP series. These are galvanic isolated um, drivers with 1.7 or 6 kV uh, isolation capability. They can drive up to 4 amp. So you have a lot of margin to, to drive also high power. And they are adapted in term of under voltage lockout. Because if you drive at 18 volt or above your SIG MOSFET, you need to adapt also the under voltage lockout compared to a standard uh, gate driver. And this is exactly what we did. So this is a product that's on the market. And on top, it offers quite very nice features like a very fast propagation delay of 80 nanoseconds, for example, this is best in class. And uh, also it's able for, of course, to manage a very high DVDT of uh, 100 uh, volt per nanosecond. So Sven, what, what you've just shown us there obviously is, um, and you touched upon quite a lot of the operational characteristics and the benefits that SICK bring to, to the user and to applications. But the the market for SICK is still limited in capacity, but there's a growing demand in the automotive and industrial applications regards to SICK. So if we're talking about, you know, for example, the electric vehicle industry, we, we've heard that that will be about 35% of the overall use for SICK. But in terms of um, ST, how, how are you addressing the growing demand for SICK components, both within automotive, but also in that industrial space that you mentioned? Yeah, I think, uh, Greg, this is, I think, the, the biggest challenge, the capacity, because right now, really, everybody, every customer, everywhere in the world is looking for silicon carbide. And I think uh, supply 
and capacity extension. This is really, I think, a real, real challenge for all of us. NST understood this, I think, quite early and invested really a lot, billions of dollars in this technology. And maybe also uh, let me show here one, one slide to our audience that really describes very well how we are preparing ourselves for the future and how we are investing to protect our customers. Yeah, so here we have the slide. So uh, just the first information I would like to share with our audience is that ST, of course, signed already several multi-year agreements with key substrate suppliers in the world for silicon carbide wafers. So that means this was the first important step to guarantee and to support the supply of silicon carbide material to our customers. But this is not sufficient. On top, what we are doing, we are also trying to extend for sure the capacity uh, within ST, the front end and back end uh, capacity. And uh, you see here on this slide that we, we were in fact ex expanding our capacity uh, from 2017. The plan is to have a factor of 10 term of capacity evolution um, in, in, let's say, more or less six, seven years. And uh, we are moving from 150 millimeter to 200 millimeter, meaning eight inch wafers. And we have a second FAB, for example, in Singapore, what will be qualified this year. We have two back end sites in Shenzhen and Buskura. And we are working on our own substrates. We acquired a company um, and uh, this was Nostel, and uh, we are now uh, building up a new factory in Catania, in Sicily, and uh, for 200 millimeter wafers. And the target is starting 2024 to get uh, let's at least 40% of the silicon carbide need from our own wafers. So that means to become really very independent from other substrate makers in the world. I think this gives really a huge, huge potential and a, a huge safety also that ST can offer to our customers because we will not depend 100% on substrate makers. We will have at least 40% of our silicon carbide wafer needs will come from in-house production. I think this is a very, very important investment and also strategic strategic decision for from the company. Great. That's really interesting to hear that you, you're actually investing in your own manufacturing of, of silicon carbide devices. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a great approach. So obviously, Sven, there's, there's a lot of uh, customers who will benefit from the, 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 the growing demand of the charging infrastructure. Uh, and also that will then filter through to the the other industrial segments. But what is the motivation why we encounter more wide uh, band gap materials being used in industrial applications? Would normal silicon devices for size, for, for example, um, what is it the difference between the two and you need to understand? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, um, definitely the general target today is to reduce the total cost of ownership. And, uh, you know, um, I think one clear target for everybody is to reach higher energy savings everywhere in the world. This is sometimes by our own motivation to make the world a little bit more green, but it's also driven by new industrial standards, for example, energy standards that customers have to meet. Then there's also there are targets, you know, of customers. They want to reduce uh, the weight of their application. Mm -hmm. They want to make their system, their application smaller. They want to be innovative. They want to create new form factors of their applications. Maybe let me tell you one example. I remember a nice story. It was already some years ago in an industrial customers here in Europe. He came to us and he said, ah, I would like to use silicon carbide in my welding equipment. And we said, oh, wow, you want to use silicon welding. It was really an early moment, momentum, silicon carbide, also price-wise was still quite high. Uh, but the guy was really interested. He said, yes, yes. Um, um, he said, I would, I would like to make my welding machine smaller, 
more light. He said, you know, a multi multi uh, kilowatt machine, welding machine is very heavy. It's a lot of uh, weight. And mm -hmm. he said, I'm shipping my, my welding machines everywhere in the world, to Asia, to the US. And he said, and the shipping costs, I pay for the size and I pay for the weight uh, when I ship them. And he said, if I can save several kilograms per, per welding machine, I can save a lot of money. And in fact, this happens. He was using SIG. The machines became 10% uh, at least smaller, more light. Mm -hmm. And he paid on the overall cost much less than, than he, what he had with IGBTs, for example. Because he could switch at higher frequencies. The magnetics became smaller. Everything, the heat sinks became smaller because silicon carbide enabled also better efficiency. So the heat sink could be, could be reduced. And so he had a lot of advantage. So the total cost of ownership for this guy became really, became smaller. He gained at the end. He paid more for the product, but overall he gained uh, money and uh, and he was very happy and he's still using silicon carbide today. Just, I think, a very uh, nice example of a customer who was very innovative in his way of thinking mm -hmm. when he understood the advantage of uh, these white band gap materials, in that case, silicon carbide. Then yeah. I said uh, integration. Uh, some customers they also want to integrate. I see also now motor control customers who wants to integrate the drive, the electronic inside the motor block, for example. So you need to be able to manage a very high power density in that case. Again, related to high efficiency, of course. Um, but and this we have to be fair and uh, fully open for sure. Silicon it itself, not silicon carbide, silicon it will remain in a lot of applications. The reference, especially there where today already the efficiency versus cost is already optimized and sufficient. Yeah. So I think this is very important. There's not always a need for silicon carbide to be very clear, but we have applications. I mentioned them at the beginning of this interview uh, where silicon carbide really plays an important role. Yeah, that's a really good example you, you mentioned there about the, the space saving and the total cost of ownership reducing. So it's not just obviously the benefit of the material, it's the benefit of the actual application of that material, space saving, shipping costs, lighter products to ship around the world. That's a really good example. One of the things that um, I've been reading up on is the growth in electric vehicles. And that's kind of been recalibrated in, in recent years to uh, it was on a much slower path, but now it has been projected to be like 41 million vehicles by uh, 2026, but also 35% uh, growth forecast. Do you see um, silicon carbide becoming the de facto uh, technology used in EV charging? Yeah, Greg, I would not say it will become. Uh, I think it's already the case. Um, I think we spoke already about the advantages of SIG and uh, I think the market accepted all these advantages. Customers understood, meanwhile, that silicon carbide really can bring a lot of advantage, especially in these type of high power applications. And uh, if you just consider, for example, a bidirectional charger, I mean, it's using silicon carbide MOSFETs and it covers the full bomb from power point of view. While, for example, in unidirectional, of course, you have a silicon carbide uh, MOSFET and silicon carbide diet in a combination. Uh, but it's it's already a standard. Uh, if you consider lower power converters, maybe customers manage that in a discrete way, but it's silicon carbide. They put them in parallel. Uh, then in the medium and higher power range, it's today more modular because meanwhile, we have also a lot of silicon carbide modules on the market. And uh, this is exactly the package uh, form these customers are more and more now, now using. Um, from our activity as ST, I can tell you we have a lot of ongoing projects with the uh, wall box makers, millions of wall boxes we are talking about in the next years. And we see also and realize heavy investments uh, driven by governments, but also private companies and entities uh, for huge charge parks, for example, uh, where they use uh, really very fast DC chargers from starting, I don't know, 60 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt, and even 300 kilowatt and more in order to minimize the charging time. Maybe let me also show you here just a very simple example how we SST address this type of DC chargers and I will share a slide uh, for that. Okay, I can see. Perfect. So here we have an example, for example, of a seven kilowatt DC charger. It's a one phase charger. 
and uh, and this is not just a plan you see even the the photo on the right so it's some it's some reference design what we have ongoing right now in our application lab in in catania you see on the input side you see for example a totem pole pfc and uh, you see the gate driver and you see the sick mosfet it's a 55 milli ohm um, mosfet 650 volt in the h2 pack 7 lead so it means it has a kelvin pin for example this device then you see here on the llc side here even there's no need to use a sick mosfet as i said before there's mm -hmm. not always a need to invest in silicon carbide here in this application it's a combination of silicon carbide and superjunction so you see we use here um, a, a superjunction mosfet from our new uh, DM6 family. D stands for fast intrinsic uh, uh, body diet. So it's a, it's a standard superjunction MOSFET, but fully performing in such type of application in an interleaved uh, configuration. And you see here on the output side, you see silicon carbide diet, 650 volt, also discrete. So you have a complete discrete approach to cover such a uh, seven kilowatt DC charger. When we now increase the power, and we go for example 22 kilowatt uh, this is an our three-phase system you see already that instead of discrete we are going to a modular approach mm -hmm. and uh, you see on the left we have a classical b6 uh, the, the let's say uh, pfc uh, configuration uh, either using here and you see it uh, three half bridges in this aspex mid packages these are silicon carbide half bridges with uh, 25 milliohm um, in, in, in one of these packages, or you can have the complete configuration in one ASPEC uh, one like package. You see it's a 1200 volt and you have six silicon carbide MOSFET in such a type of product. Then you have on the LLC side, you can see you have again the silicon carbide MOSFET half bridge, the same one we saw just here on the left side, or you have also here the, the, the module approach. And on the right side, you have here some, uh, let's say, rectification um, inside the ASPEX mid. So that means you have four silicon carbide diets, 1,200 volt in, in one package. So this type of configuration allows you, for example, if you use just the ASPEX mid from the input to the output, to have to have everywhere the same height. So that means you could use theoretically, depending on your design, just one heat sink to cover this application. You can really simplify the design mm -hmm. and minimize the form factor to going going to this modular approach. And this type of new packages like the Aspex Mid, they offer such advantages. And you see silicon carbide, and this was your question, is definitely everywhere. And this is valid for silicon carbide diets, for silicon carbide MOSFET, and for sure you need always, as I said before, this associated driver, our SD gap 2 SIC, the specific driver for silicon carbide. So Sven, you you, you were mentioned obviously there um, DC chargers, but how is SICK in comparison to GAN? Is it a better solution in high power applications like DC chargers? But where do you, you see the potential for GAN-based solutions then? Yes, um, a good question. Uh, because, you know, in SC, we are, we are starting now to, to promote also GAN. We have our first uh, device, Master GAN family on the market. Master GAN is a combination uh, of, uh, let's say, two uh, switches in a half bridge, so GAN switches in a half bridge configuration, plus a driver in one package. As I said, Master GAN family. But we are also preparing the release of the first uh, discrete GAN transistors. So it's absolutely a valid question how to position GAN versus SICK. To answer this question in a simple way, let's just uh, remind uh, ourselves and re let's recap uh, what I just said before, uh, how we position silicon carbide. Because I said before, silicon carbide is mainly suitable for higher power applications mm -hmm. and the range of multiple uh, tens of kilowatts, let's say, and above. And we are talking here about uh, voltage level, 650 volt, 1,200 volt, 1,700 volt, we said, and in the future, even above two kilovolt, what we are working on. Um, we also understood that uh, silicon carbide has a very excellent RDS on by area and a very good stability over the full temperature range. So they are really perfect for really high power applications. When we move to GAN, um, it's better in, let's say, in the a bit lower power range. And 
it compared to thick, it can switch in very, very high frequency. That doesn't mean, I said before, silicon carbide can also switch at very high frequency, but GAN itself as technology can really go uh, in the in the several megahertz range. In a real application, we know there are also other components, and uh, these components uh, maybe are not able to follow the switching capability of GAN, but nevertheless, you can switch very, very fast. And this makes GAN transistors suitable to uh, for applications where the power density is crucial. So, for example, like in small or medium sized chargers in server applications or space sensitive industrial power supplies, DIN rail power supplies, for example, uh, this is exactly where gun, the gun technology can bring their advantage. So it's really a different type of application we are targeting between silicon carbide and gun. Another parameter, what is showing the difference is the voltage level. For example, the plant uh, range of ST gun transistor will start at 100 volt and will go up to 650 volt. I remind everybody, I said before, silicon carbide and ST starts at 650 volt and is going then uh, up. Uh, so that means we are really here talking about a different voltage level, different target application. So SIG, mainly for very high power applications, yeah, it brings a bet best advantages, gun where the power density is required in small applications where you want to manage a lot of power uh, at a limited form factor. Great. So we're actually getting on now to the the characteristics uh, for, for design that need to be taken into account. So for example, for, for SICK, uh, you're talking high power, but what about, um, you know, high frequency and also about um, how suitable is it for use in low power devices such as, you know, household consumer goods? But then also the second part of this question is uh, in, in terms of the uh, the driving, what are the recommendations for SICK MOSFETs? What is it, it looks like? Because there's a lot of differences on the market and how do you offer specific drivers for, for, for SICK MOSFETs? Yeah, um, I think uh, to answer very short on one of part of your question, you are sick for household uh, consumer applications. Uh, often these applications are in the lower power range. And I said before, uh, we do not consider today really sick and we don't see it also today in this type of applications um, where we can manage very well with uh, the, let's say, standard silicon technologies we offer to the market. I think we have a very good trade off, as I said, between cost and performance. You using the standard technologies. Mm -hmm. um, one important point you mentioned is the driving, because and I mentioned it myself, I think already during the interviews, the gate driver is very important. It needs to be adapted to the real, let's say, switching needs of the transistor itself and the application safety, maybe requirements of the application. Um, you know, if I just take our technology, our second generation, it's optimized today for driving at 18 volt. So it's normal than the standard uh, super junction driving that customers knows, but 18 volt is the minimum required uh, voltage level that we recommend to get the really the lowest RDS on out of the chip area. And, uh, you know, furthermore, what is really important if you want to switch off that you we recommend to to drive the SIG MOSFET with a negative gate source voltage of minus five volt uh, operating conditions. Um, with these conditions uh, of 18 and minus five, we are well inside the absolute maximum ratings of our silicon carbide technology, what is from minus 10 volt up to 22 volt. Um, negative driving, by the way, this is also important, is recommended in bridge topologies for to have a very safe operation. It's very simple to avoid a possible um, cost conduction risk in the application. And then on top, if you combine, let's say, this negative driving with an active Miller clamp function in your gate driver, in order to mitigate any voltage spike, for example, at the gate, uh, you have a very, very safe, uh, let's say, environment, uh, and I think uh, highest safety you could you could get uh, by using a driver in combination with, with silicon carbide. And these are exactly features, this negative driving. Uh, uh, then, for sure, the, the active Miller clamp feature that we integrated in our SDGAP2 family. And I would like to show um, also here one slide what will explain a little bit better uh, what are the advantages of our gate driving family, the SD-GAP2. 
Yes, so here we are. Here we see, in fact, the SD Gap 2, the ST power driver. It's a 4 amp driver for all the family. And the differentiation of the different derivatives we have are one side the isolation capability, the galvanic isolation capability of 1.7 kilovolt in SO8 package, or the 6 kV in an SO8 wide package. They have all its 26 volt supply voltage capability, very fast propagation delay, as I mentioned already, and a very good transient immunity of more than 100 volt per nanosecond. We see the different versions. The first one is the one related to silicon carbide, where we adapted the under voltage lockout value to the higher gate source voltage requirement of this technology. Then we have versions with dual uh, driver, so two driver in one package able to drive one half bridge, or we have here then the versions in single with the, let's say, higher isolation or the lower isolation capability. And the customers can choose if they would like to have a separated sink source output or if they like to have the active Miller clamp, as I described before. I would like to highlight again to our audience that let's say the absolute uh, maximum or minimum values. I mentioned before, for our second generation, we require 18 volt to get the best RDS on. And we switch off at minus five volt as recommendation. Mm -hmm. But you can see the absolute maximum ratings of our technology. And this is really, a, again, here some distinguishing feature of our technology, a minus 10 volt in the, on the negative side. And uh, so that means you have a lot of safety margin. Even when you switch off at minus five volts, there's no risk for the device as you have at least five mm -hmm. volts of margin here. Then some customers and also some competitors, they offer dual, let's say, driving capabilities, meaning, for example, 15 volt and 18 volt. And we were considering also this. And, you know, what is important to know, if you want to drive, to simplify your gate driver, you know, to use a standard gate driver, maybe, you give up, you give up some RDS on uh, capability. Mm -hmm. You see on this slide, you see we were using here a silicon carbide MOSFET 18 milliohm device, okay, in this, in this test. We were driving at 15 volt and we were driving at at 18 volt, okay, 15 volt is here, 18 volt is here. And the love and the, on the left side, you see the RDS on. And mm -hmm. in fact, what happened is by just increasing from, from 15 volt to 18 volt, the RDS on increased around 25% uh, compared to, to the, to the um, 18 volt. So that means uh, you can, for sure, you can drive a MOSFET, some of the MOSFET at 15 volt, and but you give up, give up, clearly give up RDS on capability, so you give up efficiency. So you pay for some device and you don't use really the power the device can offer you, the efficiency you can get out of it. For that reason, we as ST define 18 volt in our data sheet. We say 18 volt is the right, and we see already some competitors who follow this and, okay. and uh, try to recommend also the 18 volt. So Sven, we, we also mentioned um, bridge topologies. Um, is it sufficient and robust and used to, to use the internal body diode or do you recommend external anti-parallel diodes in use? Yeah, this is a question we, we definitely receive uh, quite often. And, uh, you know, let's consider the intrinsic body diet is part of a SIG MOSFET, and SIG MOSFET is made with silicon carbide. So that means also the intrinsic body diet is uh, made with silicon carbide. So it's a SIG diet. And with that, it has a very low reverse recovery charge and therefore also a very low reverse recovery time. And thanks to that performance, it turns into a reverse recovery performance quite close to a silicon carbide Schottky diet. Um, on top, we did some tests and uh, the intrinsic body diet is also very robust and uh, under normal operating condition, it does not show any degradation. It's a very strong device. For that reason, it's possible to use uh, only a silicon carbide MOSFET, for example, in the bridge topology, uh, without, need, without any need to add some external anti-parallel SIG diet and you reach the best efficiency without any increase of the bomb cost. 
On the other side, there's some little, uh, uh, let's say, um, difference if you compare an intrinsic body diet with an external sick diet, uh, because with an external diet, the forward voltage drop is even a little bit better, lower than the intrinsic one. So that means for customers who really wants to get even the latest uh, a bit or best, uh, let's say, efficiency out of their application, in that case, they could use such anti-parallel sick diet and they can earn some points, let's say, of efficiency. But this is really only the case when you really look for the absolute best efficiency because it's just a very, very, let's say, little positive contribution you can have from such an external diet. But normally we do not recommend it. We say the internal intrinsic body diet is fully sufficient to get a very, very good efficiency out of it. Sven, it's, it's been a great discussion today, but I'm going to ask you two two questions to finish. So we, we've spoken a lot about high power, uh, you know, multiple kilowatt applications. So how is it that ST address the market in terms of package, but also in terms of silicon carbide? What are there in development kit boards available for prototyping and R&D that uh, SIT can offer users? Yeah, um, in fact, um, I think we saw already on, on some of the slides, some packages we, we are offering. I mentioned some of them. Let me quickly recap. So for, let's say for discrete, I think we have the through hole packages, the HIP 247 with the 200 degree junction capability I mentioned. We have the, uh, the isolated TO 220 full pack, for example. Then for sure, we have the different version with, the, with or without the Kelvin pin. This is, becomes more and more a standard. In SMD, we have the, the H2 pack with seven leads. We have also top side cooling, the HU3 pack device, what comes now new to the market. We have leadless packages like the PowerFlat 8x8. Um, we have a multi sintering devices now in our range, the ST pack, very new. Uh, and for sure, the modular packages I described before, the ASPEC Smith, I think, uh, well commented. We have the ASPEC 1, the ASPEC 2, and we will have for industrial customers as well uh, uh, very soon also the ASPEC drive for the very high mm -hmm. uh, power, let's say, up. Applications. And yes, you're right. Uh, customers are also looking for sure to to get, uh, let's say, to get uh, to get support in terms of boards, of evaluation boards, reference designs. We are very active also on this side. And may you allow me to to share a last slide to our audience, just showing some of the, the latest boards we released, we developed for our customers to get some experience in a simple plug and play way with silicon carbide and uh, let's say all the other other technologies around. Okay, here we see the slide. Uh, just some selected, let's say, silicon carbide and gun related uh, evaluation or reference boards from ST. Maybe from the left to the, to the right, you see, for example, here, this is a 100 watt auxiliary power supply. So 100 watt auxiliary means already for quite high power applications. And this is in fact a board, what is equipped uh, with a 1,700 uh, volt K5 super junction MOSFET from ST. Um, so again, here the message is not always a need to have always silicon carbide, you reach really a fantastic, uh, let's say, efficiency. But as I said before, if you really want to maximize, maximize the efficiency out of such a board, uh, we also put a 1,700 volt SIG MOSFET um, from ST in this board, and you again earn at least some points of efficiency on top. So this is a very nice, very new board, what I can really recommend for customers who look for auxiliary supplies in that range. And uh, what is really impressive, you see, it can manage up to 1000 volt mm -hmm. DC voltage. So it's a very interesting uh, auxiliary board for very high power applications. Then you see some uh, totem pole PFC here in the middle based on SIG MOSFET. Uh, SD GAP 2 is our gate driver for, for the SIG, as I just explained before. You have also some SCR, some tie restock for the inrush limitation here in this board. It's a 3.6 kilowatt board, so quite nice reference design. Customers can order. Then when we go again in the more higher power, you see here a 15 kilowatt Vienna rectifier. We have both in unidirectional and bidirectional. They use 
the SIG MOSFET, SIG diet, NCS, the GAP2 for the driving uh, on, uh, let's say, uh, on, the, on these boards. For sure, on the, on the B directional, we have only SIG MOSFET, there's the GAP2 on the unidirectional, then also the SIG diets. Then we see here in the, in the left bottom corner, we see, for example, a three channel interleaf PFC, three kilowatt, where we use some SIG diets, for example, for testing. Then we have here related to GAN, um, as we also spoke about GAN, we have a new uh, DC DC. 250 watt resonant LLC board. What uh, is just uh, what was just finalized, where we uh, present the use of Master Gun One. And last but not least, also a more simple, let's say, test board for customers who just want to become familiar with the new gun technology on the market. Also, this is a board what we can provide to our customers for very, really fast uh, testing uh, of this technology. There's more, there's more to come, uh, but I think uh, it helps a lot our customers to, to get the experience with silicon carbide, with the driving of silicon carbide, or for sure also the use of gun transistors now in their application. Spent. That's great sharing us with us those examples. I know we've already had some content submitted to Design Spark about the totem pole. It is a technology that we are covering, and also, you know, it's been great talking to yourself and getting the perspective from ST on silicon carbide power devices today. I really do thank your time and effort that you've put into this conversation, and I hope we talk again real soon. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I would like really to thank you for this nice opportunity today to talk about power from ST. And I hope that everybody understood the strong commitment from ST towards efficiency. Uh, I think uh, such commitment is crucial for all of us, for every individual, at every day, at every minute, in every electronics. So thanks to everybody for listening. And again, thanks for this nice opportunity.